Has this ever happened to you? You're recording your instrument and you start to think, this is it. This is the one. After 25 takes, I finally nailed the perfect recording. It wasn't even recording? Son of a bitch. Thankfully, it doesn't need to happen anymore thanks to an awesome logic feature called Flashback Capture. If you ever play something amazing without hitting record, just press Shift R on your keyboard. Logic will retroactively remember what you just played and drop it into your project like you were recording the whole time. It works for both audio and MIDI tracks, it's super helpful, and it proves once and for all they're always listening. What up guys, it's Spencer, and today I'm going to show you five Logic Pro features that you're probably not using, but should be. Real quick, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. The goal is to reach 100K by the end of the year, so I can get that plaque, hang it on my wall, and officially die a happy man. So click that subscribe button and ring the bell, and with that, let's get into it. Whenever you record something, you should be doing multiple takes and then you wanna compile the best parts from each take into one magical, perfect performance. That process is called comping, and Logic makes it super easy with a feature called Take Two. By default, the Take Two feature should be activated for audio tracks, but you can also use it for MIDI tracks. Just go to the menu bar at the top, click Record, then Overlapping MIDI Recordings, and make sure the Create Take folder is selected for both Cycle Off and Cycle On. Now when you record multiple takes over the same section, Logic will automatically create a drop-down folder containing all of them. For audio tracks, you can simply click and drag the best parts from each take to build your comp. It's super intuitive. For MIDI, it's a little bit more limited. At the time of this video, you can only select one full take. You can't click and drag sections like you can with audio. However, there's a good workaround. If we put our playhead at various spots throughout the take, and press Command T to cut it into smaller pieces, we can still select the best parts to compile a single perfect take. If you're anything like me, most of the time you're recording music by yourself. This is all well and good until you're trying to record something that requires you to be away from your computer. This gets really annoying because it forces you to walk back and forth between each take, adding another level of stress, as well as a distraction from focusing purely on getting the perfect take. The solution for this is the Logic Remote. This is a free app that allows you to control Logic from your iPhone or iPad. I use it all the time when I'm recording drums. It gives me the ability to hit record without having to be at my computer. And when I'm done recording, I can hit stop, hit play to listen back, and even hit record again if I wanna do multiple takes and save them in a take folder. It saves me so much time and energy and allows me to focus entirely on capturing the perfect take. Getting started in Logic can feel overwhelming. Too many buttons, too many options, and no clear path to just making music. That's exactly why I created Logic Pro Jumpstart. It's a step-by-step -step course that shows you how to go from a blank project to recording full songs at home, even if you've never used Logic before. You'll learn how to set up your gear, record your instruments and vocals, and shape your sound so it feels clean, professional, and ready to share, without getting overwhelmed in all the technical mumbo jumbo that you don't need. It's a great way to hit the ground running in Logic, so you should definitely check it out through the link in the description. And with that, here's another Logic feature you should be using. This is an example of an overwhelming project. There are so many tracks, everything is basically the same color, and this is the sort of thing that stresses me out and makes it harder for me to be productive, which is why I use track stacks, color coding, and icons to keep my project nice and organized. The first thing I like to do is think about how I want to organize everything. I typically will organize everything into the categories of drums and percussion, bass, guitars, keys, vocals, and sound effects. With this in mind, I'll go through my project and select all the drums and percussion tracks. Control click one of the tracks and select Create Track Stack. From here, we have the option to do a folder stack or a summing stack. Since I'm using this purely for organization, I'm going to select Folder Stack. With all of my drum tracks in the folder stack, I now like to expand the folder and select all of those tracks. Then I'm going to control click 
and select Assign Track Color. For this, I'll choose orange, but you can choose any color you like. Then I'm going to control click on the icon. Since this is for drums and percussion, I'm going to switch the icon to a drum set. Lastly, I'm going to select all of the tracks again, and this time I'm going to control click on one of the regions and select color regions by track. Now every region on those tracks will be orange, which makes it really easy to read. Then I just repeat that process for the rest of my categories using different colors for each. And when it's done, the whole project is clean, color-coded, and labeled with icons that clearly show what everything is. It makes finding and adjusting things super easy, and when you're done editing a section, you can collapse the folder stack to make the session feel smaller and much more manageable. Sometimes you wanna add an effect to a very specific region of a track, like reverb on just one vocal line. Most people either A, create a new track just for that one effect, or B, use automation to painfully dial it in. Both of those options suck, especially when you compare it to selection-based processing. It lets you apply effects to just one region on a track, and it's a game changer. Let's say I want to add reverb on this one vocal line. I don't need reverb here, and I don't need reverb there, but this All I need to do is control click the region, scroll down to processing, and choose selection-based processing. From there, it lets you load up two different effect chains to try out. Once you add your effects, you can hit preview to hear it both before and after the processing so you know exactly what you're getting. When it sounds right, you've got two ways to apply it. You can just hit apply, which bounces the effect straight into that region, or you can hit create new take and then apply which puts the original and processed version into a take folder so you can precisely control when the effect comes in and out. If you found this helpful, all I ask is that you subscribe. And if you're struggling to get started and not sure what to buy, you should check out this video right here, where I show you exactly what you need to start recording studio quality music at home. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you over there.